It's been a while since I mentioned Bill Cosby in my commentaries. Um, what happened was the other night I was uh, going through some of my DVDs uh, and Blu-rays and I came across my Cosby collection. And I came across uh, the Bill Cosby show the first season. And I started to think about this man's legacy and how black Hollywood turned their back and left him out there hanging. And I thought about the video I saw last week of the comedian Lunell talking to Sinbad. And it seemed like she was just hell bent on just bad mouthing Bill Cosby, just throwing stuff out there that's not true. And the reason why I think I'm going to focus on this, this Bill Cosby again is because we keep talking about systematic racism. But it the only thing we're talking about is police brutality. We're not talking about education. We're not talking about in medicine. We're not talking about in media. We're not talking about in church. We're not talking about how racism affected our relationships, male, female, father, son, mother, daughter, brother, sister, husband, wife. Racism has even affected the way how we view each other. We keep talking about how down we are with each other, but we're not. Because there's a segment of black folk who can't stand being black. There are even some who are willing to go out there and kill another black person just because. Literally overnight, we let white America, white Hollywood, white liberals, accuse this man of a crime that is evidence presented that's out there that's that, uh, is written in front of everybody that he didn't do it. Or it didn't go down the way that the media is presented. Now, I, I keep saying, we know a white folks' part they played in this. But black America left this man hanging. This man kicked open a lot of doors. And all of a sudden, he's the punchline. And a lot of these black folks that went out there and bad Mount Cosby, you see them on TV now. But the thing is, that's, it's short-lived. They just have you come on for a few seconds when they can't get the guests they want or they only want you to come on and speak about issues that they take notice, but any other time they ignore you. That being said, Felicia Rashad worked with Bill Cosby initially on the uh, Cosby Show, 1984 to 1992. And then around about 1998, he came back with a new Cosby show called just simply called Cosby. And this is the image from, from there. Obviously, this is before he started having issues with his eyes. Now, I noticed when the show went off the air, Cosby started having issues by when he was doing interviews. Now, I want you to look closely at Bill Cosby, his, his, his eyes. Right here, everything seemed normal, okay? He took a picture, look, look the difference. You can start. You can start seeing, see, seeing um, his, his the way his eyes look. He was going blind. This is why when Bill O'Reilly, you might remember, I said in my commentary, Bill O'Reilly's making fun of Bill Cosby wearing shades inside. He's doing interviews. Remember they did that Cosby reunion, all the cast members, and Bill Cosby had shades on. Well, this is that reunion in the Today Show. And right then and there, I knew something was wrong because I have a family member that had the same issues. Fortunately, he was able to have surgery and have repaired. Sometimes surgery is not the option for everybody. He was slowly going blind. That's why when people kept saying, well, Cosby's doing all these different things during that time frame, I'm like, mm, he was having issues. Because if you watched him, when he was around people, Felicia Rashad, or Camille Cosby or his daughters always had him by the arm. Tempest Bledsoe, I remember watching Malcolm Jamal Warner every now and then when they was around each other. They would grab him by the arm. They would take a hold of him. You see, Felicia looked at the camera and Bill is not. Bill never took a picture looking like that. You could see it. This is why when y'all were saying that Bill Cosby running around being a dirty old man doing all this other stuff, I'm like, nah, mm-mm. But y'all didn't want to see that. Y'all wanted to believe that this black man had to have some dirt on him. He must have cheated on his wife. He must have been out there messing with these women. Here's another image of Felicia Rashad and Bill. This is the one when he was wearing the glasses. Because at the time, it was noticeable. This is Robert Culp, his best friend. The one who worked on I Spy with him. This is the, he died rep, maybe a year before, if I remember, before the, the, they, they brought the allegations again. If he was still here, I think he'd have been the only one that probably been in Bill Corner defending him. 
they were great friends. If you, you notice when they when they get an award, look who's look who's right there with them. And anybody know that Robert Cope had had stopped having problems with his legs? It's an episode of Lois and Clark he was on where if you watch him, he couldn't stand or walk or run too much. They had to have a stunt double in for him. So for the, Robert Cope to go down on his knees and and have and be in a position that Bill and Felicia shot in, I mean, look. That dude was there for Bill. And the reason why I bring this up because it's it's crazy how we talk about how down we are for black as black folk, but sometimes there's people outside the community maybe mean more down for us at times. But this is these images that people seem to forget. This is why I knew when they were talking about what Bill Cosby, the Playboy Mansion in 2000, such a doing. I'm like, no, Bill Cosby had eye problems. Because it was people, it was being documented, even Bill Cosby saying he was having trouble with his vision. But see, just like Michael Jackson, the stuff was right in front of y'all, y'all didn't want to hear because you had to believe that a black man had to be the boogeyman of the story. Here's another image of Bill with Felicia with the glasses on. He didn't want nobody to see him like that. Got people was whispering. Felicia was shot, knew Bill Cosby for, for, for uh, when Daniel for almost now 40 years. Bill ain't never made a pass. So even before she got married to Amara Shah, Bill was on a hunt for something. He would have went after her. There was other black stars and female white stars that Bill never crossed that line. But all of a sudden, you, everybody said, mm, let's, let's go after Cosby. Remember last month, Roseanne and Roseanne done about Bill Cosby. Why? Because Bill Cosby was looking to get out because of the, the, the virus. And if he, if Bill Cosby do pass in jail for that virus or whatever issue, we need to start looking at all these black and white folk that jumped on the bandwagon because there's a lot of story that they changed the damn rules to put this man in jail. Felicia Rashad knew there was something going on and they attacked her for it. This is that interview where they had that black chick off uh, ABC X and Felicia Shaw studio. And Felicia said, she said, it's something going on. Wendy Williams, every Don Lemon, all of them, all the different talk shows, The View, everybody just, just dismissed Felicia Shaw. They had dismissed her to the point where Felicia Shaw had to go and to just stop talking about it. She defended Bill. She said, I know him, but they didn't take her word for it. They took women that we didn't know. Women that had bad, questionable background. They said, Psh, "We're gonna believe up," and they go. And then they would with Gloria Allred, a no no ambulance chaser, a woman who has it hard on for black men, wealthy or not. Her daughter was just was a part of it. And then when they was going to defend Harvey Weinstein, the media said, "Wait a minute, she been defending Harvey Weinstein." All of a sudden, the media let her get away with it. All those women, was, I had yelling, yelling, me too. I told y'all, I said, give it a year, they're going to flip it on black men. I said, give it another year, you ain't going to hear nothing else about it once they do the damage. Felicia Rashad was mocked in the media. It was talked about like a dog. She said it's destroying one's legacy. What did Judd Aptow say? We got to destroy his legacy. We got to destroy him. Then when Judd Aptow and Leah Dunham friend was accused of that, they went silent. All of a sudden, Alyssa Milano, all these people went silent. Jill Scott was playing both sides of it. Even, uh, 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 doc, uh um, what's his name? Um, Professor Watkins, who I had respect for, who I, I begrudgingly got respect for now, even he was playing both sides of the fence. A lot of people was criticizing Cosby should have did this. The man was giving money and donating, opening doors to people. He was doing more than Michael Jordan, Oprah Winfrey ever did. Now they on only on PR tour trying to manipulate people. Y'all, like, Michael gave some money. Oprah gave some money, but Bill was consistent in one out there giving money and doing right by the community, and we left him hanging. People, everybody, when Bill was out, out waiting to go to trial, everybody was saying he's guilty. Guilty, guilty, proclaim him guilty before he even had a day in court. 
and know it's all of them come from the left. Biden get accused of it, and some other men get accused of sexual uh, harassment or assault or whatever. That mean they all of a sudden they start picking and choosing. It came out the less move is the reason why Janet Jackson's career ain't been the same. Why she ain't she 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 ain't selling the records like she used to, or the the venues like she used to. You had Catholic uh Gifford come out and defend Bill Cosby. She said, I know Bill Cosby. She said, No, that's not the Bill Cosby I know. The media wanted to downplay that, but when Linda Carter, who ain't never worked with Bill Cosby, come out, yeah, he needs to go in jail and blah, 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 blah. But was silent with Les Moon Vance. And black and the members of the black community were still mad that Cosby criticized some uh, Eddie Murphy did 30 something years ago. And Eddie Murphy like a like an old old punk. Yeah, Bill Cosby. John Amos worked with Bill Cosby. John wasn't getting a bunch of calls. He turned on Cosby. I'm sitting there just watching how everybody turned on the man. And the people that was defending him, he's telling us we were wrong. But we're like, y'all not paying attention. Y'all not listening to what they said. Now stuff has slowly come out. Now people out there now say, yo, man, oh, Cosby got shut up. But we're like, where were y'all at back then? Now, I know I've, I've talked about this before, but I have to bring this up again because somebody that worked close with Cosby, well, last month showed his true colors, is doing it again. Spike Lee. Now, this cat I've supported. Watch practically anything this man has done. Okay? When I was able to get old enough to go watch his movies, pay to watch his movies, and even went back and bought his old stuff. Even when he gave interviews, even when he, I thought the spike was a little too animated, I still defended him, rationalized him. Well, Spike Lee sat back and talked all that crap about Bill Cosby. He didn't even defend Bill Cosby, dude. I, I thought that was odd that certain black folks that Cosby helped was silent. Spike Lee comes out to defend Willie Allen. He said something about Willie as my friend. He should be counsel because I'm going to leave the link. You come out to defend Woody Allen, but you come out and defend Bill Cosby, a man that gave you money, a man that went to Hollywood and said, look, Spike Lee's trying to do this movie I think is important. You guys need to get it. It was Bill Cosby that was able to get Magic Johnson. Michael, remember, Michael Jordan didn't have nothing to do. He was able to get Janet Jackson and them to donate money. It was Cosby. He picked up the phone. Bill Cosby, same dude, they, got, they helped uh, Melvin Peebles' father uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, Mario Van Peebles' father, Melvin uh, Van Peebles, he the one that was able to give him money where he can do sweet badass. That's what Earth when the fire, Earth when the fire got discovered. Think about that. Cosby was donating money to political groups when Harold Washington was running. Cosby was in Chicago, done counting different people back then. The ones who cooned in the last 20, 25, 30 years. But Cosby was consistent. But Spike Lee said, yeah, Cosby stole my idea. Ever since Spike Lee got that honorary Academy Award, he'd been in super coon mode. Now, the last few days, he's been pushing his mo new Vietnam movie. Usually, I'd be like, I'm going to go watch it. I ain't watching it. I don't care. It's on Netflix. I'm not, I'm not watching it. I'm not supporting anything this, this bow-legged mother trucker do anymore. Because you sat there and you gave an interview and accused a brother of stealing, stealing from you. But you sure was taking that brother money. But I should have known you went silent. You went silent through this whole thing. But you're going to defend Woody Allen? Woody's my friend. You, I mean, you, 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 you didn't come out and say, "Hey, back off, Felice Rashad." You out here saying something about his his adoptive daughter. You well, I don't, I don't think he did what, he, what, what he's accused of. Really, this dude married his adoptive daughter. I want you to think about all the people. That was out there supporting Mr. Cosby that was rich or famous. Everybody threw him under the bus. Well, I never liked Bill Cosby. No, he wasn't funny to me. But before that happened, everybody's giving him awards, blah, blah, blah. The moment he get accused once. And when, and, when it, and when evidence came out 
There's not, some of these women were not telling stories that it was nowhere near Cosby. Media still is not, we still think mean, he's guilty. And last, and, and last month, and, 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 I, and, and, and it clicked in my head to them. I'm like, wait a minute. Spike Lee had some negative said about Cosby when it was Cosby, like he was, they were trying to get him out of jail because of the virus. Then Roseanne and Rosie. And then you got Lunette, Lunell. She's been filling in for Vlad or whatever. She's nonstop talking negative about Cosby. Y'all want somebody payroll or something? But Spike Lee, you supposed to be Mr. Pro Black. You defend this, this white Jewish dude that y'all got nothing to come but wearing glasses and living in New York. I don't recall Woody Allen ever come out there speaking, speaking about you or defending you in public. If he has, it was low key. Or it was buried. I guarantee you, if Spike was to say something or do something, I don't recall Woody Allen. They was accusing Spike of being anti-Semitic. I don't recall Woody Allen defending Spike Lee. I remember Bill Cosby defending Spike Lee. Now I see why Denzel and Will Smith and Samuel Jackson and Anthony Mackey and some others don't want to work with Spike or they, or they, or they, or they don't go around praising Spike like that. Cause there have been interviews where, 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 and what's the old boy that played in, um, oh, I can't think of it. He played in that movie with, um, oh, Lorenz Tate, Dead Presence. He, he, he played the heavy in a lot of movies. He currently was on, um, uh, Black Lightning playing the pastor. I can't think of the brother's name. I, I can't think of his name, but, um, he's a character actor. And he was critical of Spike. I'm like, damn, why y'all spending your dirty laundry like that? And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I thought and I thought of, and I thought about it. And then and to be fair, remember when him and Tyler Perry got into it? He publicly went out there and, and as, as now it's one thing a Joe Schmo like me giving my opinion. But you went in front of another black man and said, Let's go talk about Tyler Perry. And then Tyler Perry turned around and named a studio album. Now you thought that Tyler Perry was was out there cooling buffoon and putting out substandard material, which I think he does at times. But when they opened that studio, they had Spike Lee name. I'm like, wait, man, you wouldn't, you wouldn't open a stage for Bill Cosby. You, y'all want to pretend like Cosby didn't exist. But Spike, you was out there criticizing time. But they went, but, but he went to uh, Atlanta, opened, oh, had a stage name for you. I'm like, ain't that, ain't that funny? All y'all can backstab, backstab each other, but the one brother that been consistent, the one brother that went, wanted, wanted to make sure his people. Like when Bill Cosby was trying to buy NBC, it was a num- it was a number of y'all well known black folks that have joined in, and and and, and they and it would and it couldn't it was off the G couldn't refuse. So now Mr. Cosby at their age, he's in poor health. Y'all throwing shade at, him. and we sit met J- John and John Q. Public, those of us who was defending him. Now y'all starting to see what we've been saying that it was a setup. If you go back and look at how the whole thing started, it was a plan. They got Cosby classified as a sexual predator. The man can't see. But you got Spike Lee out here. Bat- he's been leading the, leading the charge, bad mouthing him. Now you're going to come out and defend Woody Allen of all people? Now, I remind you, Ronan Farrell and his sister and, and, and Mia Farrell, they've been talking about Woody Allen for years. People in Hollywood still work with Woody Allen. He still gets... Get, Studio, he still get get people to work with. Him. They defend him, Scarlett Johansson, and so many else. Now Spike Lee, you come out, you got to get everybody else. Said I'm gonna stand with Willie. You should just council culture is wrong. But y'all, well, I, you mean council cause this evidence to suggest that the man was set up. They changed the laws around to put that man in jail. They didn't care about Cosby daughter dying a few weeks before they put him in jail. They didn't, they didn't care that that stress it was added to that family's drama. They didn't attack the man's wife. And if anybody worked to him, say anything different, they, 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 they get scared. They even tried to blame Cosby for old boy to play Alvin working at a damn Trader Joe. Remember, when, that was 2018 when, when we found old boy Alvin working at Trader Joe. When, when you did the Cosby show off there in 1992. But Cosby's to blame for that. 
Then you all these Negroes whose careers was never going to be any bigger than what Hollywood let them be. You're blaming Cosby for it. But to sit there and see Spike Lee of all people who benefited from Cosby money and his influence in black Hollywood helping you out. Because let y'all remember, Malcolm X was a taboo topic. They could have been made of Malcolm X, but they did one with uh, uh, Morgan Freeman, a little low-budget one. In the 1980s, they, they, they had little scenes with Malcolm. They always played Malcolm X as slick as some or nasty. Warner Brothers knew exactly what they were doing when they cut the budget. It was Cosby got on the phone, like, and, and that's the thing. People forget that. I don't expect somebody born in the mid to late '80s or into the '90s or now to know Cosby legacy like that. Cause the media has a way, social media, because everybody got a damn opinion. Like people say, "Well, Harvey, you got an opinion," but see, I can back mine up. But to sit here and read an arc about Spike Lee defending Woody Allen, but you throwing Cosby on the bus. That shows you Spike. Spike, all he wanted was that war, and he got it. Now he said, "Now I'm, 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 I'm up there. I got an Academy Award, regardless if it's underrated or not." He's now he said to say Academy Award winner Spike Lee. He got that. He's on the board of directors of the Academy. I told y'all a lot of these Negroes that we follow, the ones who all that pro-black shit when it's convenient. I ain't buy, I don't buy it. I know people say, well, they celebrities we shouldn't look to them. Unfortunately, we do look to celebrities. I'm not saying I do. But we live in a society that they always speaking on our behalf. You notice no other celebrity gets on TV and speak for the community. They always put the camera and mic in front of ours. Now I see why Michael Rappaport and all these people have been talking about them. Whether I agree with it or not. Cause Spike, you're a rat. I've been a, I've been a fan of Spike Lee's for thirty years, and to sit and to sit here and see him cool buffoon within the last year, or especially the last few months, it's, it's disappointing to say the least. But you're gonna do the interview. You're gonna give somebody this council culture is wrong. But you had no problem out there bad math of Cosby last month. That says a lot about Spike Lee. I would never, ever, ever watch anything with Spike Lee ever again. Anything attached with anything with Spike Lee attached to it would never ever watch it. Greatly disappointed in you, but he is a baby. Spike Lee is a baby boomer. So you know how some baby boomers are the opportunistic. Bad mouth Cosby would defend Woody Allen. Felicia Rashad had the guts to go out there and defend Cosby, and she was attacked. And y'all left out the hanging. Roland Farrell went out there and led the charge on Cosby, then slowly used that to go ahead and I'm going to attack my, step, my, my adopted father. But then when he gave an interview with you know, Bill Cosby, the other day I was reading an interview with Bill Cosby, I'm like, why y'all mention dropping Bill Cosby's name so much? In black Hollywood, y'all a bunch of cowards. Y'all y'all see them do this every rip. They did to Chris Brown. A one incident in, in dude life, and they just it just just attack, attack, attack. None of you you so-called mature brothers said, let's go talk to Brother Chris. Let's go help him out. When we give interviews, check him. Look how look how look look how, look how Spike went out here and he he did defend Nate, but not loudly, but you out here defending Woody Allen. Y'all want to talk about racism? Y'all want to talk about it only from the from the what's in the police department? No, Hollywood. And this is why to those who are are, are, are white who hear us, and y'all quit to assume that black folks down with the liberals. Nah, mm -mm. a lot of our issues come from the so-called woke white liberals. That media destroyed. Uh, Michael Jackson's reputation and name, even in death, and they doing it. They doing it. R. Kelly doing it. Bill Cosby. Y'all don't talk about none of these. Y'all don't talk about Woody Allen. None of these cats the same way. Y'all talk about black men. 
See, if we're going to have an issue, if we're going to have a conversation about systematic racism, let's talk about it all. But people like Spike Lee go sit their ass down now because they compromised. Once Spike Lee got that honorary uh, uh, Oscar, the tone of his interviews even started to change. He didn't tone down. That's all he wanted was a, was a piece of metal. All them years, you ain't said a damn thing about Cosby. Then now, he didn't get man in jail. You figure, I can say what the hell I want. His, his reputation is destroyed. But you're going to defend Woody Allen, who his daughter been yelling since 1990-something. The early 90s that it was inappropriate contact. I don't think Woody did it. I'm, I'm not down with this council culture. You didn't say none of that when all these brothers being accused. You sat there and it was quiet because you was afraid that you might be the next one. You fucking coward. 